In part 5 of the Road Stakeout series, we'll be focusing on the stake slope routine in Magnet Field 3.2. From the main menu, we do stake and then slope, and then you've got five options. You've got road, horizontal alignment, horizontal and vertical alignment, line work, and also code to be able to stake out with this slope routine. In this example, we'll use road and we'll select it from the list. And we'll double check that we're using reference centerline by hitting the magnet symbol. Set up, ensure that there's a tick symbol next to reference center line. Down the bottom left, we'll hit the three buttons next to the stake report option to ensure that we're using the correct stakeout report type. And this uses the slope configuration. Once you're happy, we'll hit next. In the stake alignment screen, we'll set the chainage and chainage interval. We can select the hinge point, either left or right hand side, by using the symbols next to hinge point. And we can use the triangle with arrow symbol to flip the slope from going left to right or right to left. And we can go into the magnet symbol and then help. And this explains some of the features and the menu options and this stake alignment screen. Once you are happy all the settings are correct, hit next. And then we'll enter in the cut and fill banner ratios of three. Magnet field only works with ratios. So if you have a percent or an angle, you'll have to convert these to a ratio and enter them here in this screen. You can use the calculator function from the main screen under calculate and then calculator if required. And then simply hit stake. You will notice that there is no information in the cut and fill bar until you approach the area in between the hinge point and the slope where it intersects the natural surface. If you hit in the top section, you can change view. In this case, cross section view might be quite helpful to see the hinge point location and where the batter angles are being displayed at, at a cut and fill ratio. In this case, we're using map view. If you click on one of the display options down the bottom and then go into the magnet symbol and then help, this will explain some of the display option values and what they represent to provide you the most information as you're doing your stakeout. Once you are happy with these, you can simply move to the design point to be set out. And now we notice as we move in between the, the hinge point right verge and the right banner string, we can see that we are now getting height values. Again, this is dynamic. As you move in position and height, it will update where the, the batter point intersecting the natural surface point is located. As we can see here, when we get very close to it, it is highlighted with a green circle around the design point, and the cut and fill bar goes to full green, and we can go into the magnet field symbol, set reference. In this case, we're setting the reference to the right batter. And then we go into the display options, and we select the offset to the reference just set to show that the stake slope routine is matching where the design right batter string meets the natural surface as calculated in the office using the DTM provided from the natural surface. We can see here that the slope is at 1 and 3 at the correct chainage and our height is 0 which is meeting our natural surface and we can simply hit measure we can look at the data and the mark and we can hit the green tick when you are happy with this position. We will now go back to the stake slope option and we still want to use the hinge point on the left verge but we will now change the better ratio to 1 is to 2 with a left offset. This is using a real life example if you needed to change the design on the fly as required by the supervisor on site. And we can see here that we can stake out this new batter position with the offset from the left verge and a new ratio on the fly. And once you are happy you're over the point, you can go into the magnet symbol and then topo, and you can recall this point. And then once you remain over the point, you can hit save and store this as a state point. And again, you can set a reference and check the mark.
You can also apply a road height offset by going to the magnet symbol and going design offsets. Either drops or increases the road elevation by the desired amount. In this case, I'm dropping down 250 millimeters across the design. So in this case, it will be similar as in the stake slope option, having a down offset of 250 mil at the left verge hinge point. And again, we can stake this point out by hitting the measure button and looking at the data and mark. And looking in the data value, you will see a design vertical offset of 250 mil. Once you're happy, you simply hit the green tick. And you can back out to the stake slope screen and hit the magnet symbol and go view report. And you can review the stake points for your slope routine. And if we go back and we change from road to line work, we can pick this from the map. And in this example, we are selecting the, the left verge to show you how it is similar to the road option. If we go into the magnet symbol then help, we can see some explanations of the different stake slope routines and options and what they mean. And then you can simply hit next. In this next screen, if we go into the magnet symbol and then help again, we can see some further explanations about these next offsets that can be applied. This offset screen just gives you more options in terms of having an offset from the line work and then extending out the grade or the slope. And you can also have an option to stake a curb or a ditch and this will create another string line. So we can see here we just have a half a metre horizontal and vertical offset ditch as diagonal as a basic V drain. It's using the left verge string as the centre line. We can add a right offset so that we extend out the drain and we can change the curb ditch style. So this is completely customizable by the user and it's just a, another way you can set out a drain on the fly. In this example, however, we're applying no centerline offsets or no drain values. So we simply hit next and we set the chainage and interval and we're applying no left or right or down or up options. We hit next and we apply our cut and fill banner angles which is one and three, and then we simply hit stake. And again, we can see we're not getting any height information until we go in between the hinge point and the catch point. And again, this is dynamic like in the road. As you move, the position of the catch point will slightly change. And once you are over the design point, then we'll come up with a green circle and you can simply hit measure and you can again check the data and mark tabs and once you're happy hit the green tick again if you hold down on the chainage value down the bottom you will see the design point design chainage design centerline offset design slope ratio catch point hinge point elevations so this is another good indicator to ensure you're setting out the correct offset using the correct design slope. Now this is the design slope entered in by the user in the enter slope page. And if you notice, you go back and change it to one is two, you will see that the value changes. And once you are happy, you can simply back out and go to the home screen. And this concludes part five in the road stakeout series.